Charles Brandon, 1st Duke of Suffolk, 1st Viscount Lal KG was the son of Sir William Brandon and Elizabeth Brian. Through his third wife Mary Tudor he was brother-in-law to Henry VIII. His father was the standard bearer of Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond and was slain by Richard III in person at the Battle of Bosworth Field. Suffolk died of unknown causes at Guildford. Biography, Charles Brandon was the second but only surviving son of Sir William Brandon, Henry Tudor's standard bearer at the Battle of Bosworth Field, where he was slain by Richard III. His mother, Elizabeth Breen, was daughter and co-heiress of Sir Henry Breen. Charles Brandon was brought up at the court of Henry VII. He is described by Duckdale as a person comely of stature, high of courage and conformity of disposition to King Henry VIII, with whom he became a great favourite. Brandon held a succession of offices in the royal household, becoming master of the horse in 1513, and received many valuable grants of land. On May 15, 1513, he was created Viscount Lyle, having entered into a marriage contract with his ward, Elizabeth Grey, Shiro Jury Viscountess Lyle. The contract was ended and the title was forfeited as a result of Brandon's marriage to Mary Tudor in 1515. He distinguished himself at the sieges of the copyright Rillon and Tournai in the French campaign of 1513. One of the agents of Margaret of Savoy, governor of the Netherlands, writing from before the copyright Rillon, reminded her that Lord Lyle was a second king, and advised her to write him a kind letter. At this time, Henry VIII was secretly urging Margaret to marry Lyle, whom he created Duke of Suffolk, although he was careful to disclaim any complicity in the project to her father, Maximilian I, Holy Roman Emperor. After his marriage to Mary, Suffolk lived for some years in retirement, but he was present at the Field of the Cloth of Gold in 1520. In 1523 he was sent to Calais to command the English troops there. He invaded France in company with Floris Egmont, Count of Buren, who was at the head of the Flemish troops, and laid waste the north of France, but disbanded his troops at the approach of winter. After Wolsey's disgrace, Suffolk's influence increased daily. He was sent with Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk, to demand the Great Seal from Wolsey. The same nobleman conveyed the news of Anne Bollian's marriage to King Henry, after the divorce from Queen Catherine and Suffolk acted as high steward at the new Queen's coronation. He was one of the commissioners appointed by Henry to dismiss Catherine's household, a task he found distasteful. His family had a residence on the west side of Borough High Street, London, for at least half a century prior to his building of Suffolk Place at the site. Suffolk supported Henry's ecclesiastical policy, receiving a large share of the lands after the dissolution of the monasteries. In 1544, he was for the second time in command of an English army for the invasion of France. He died at Guildford, Surrey, on August 24 in the following year. At Henry VIII's expense he was buried at Windsor in St. George's Chapel. Marriage to Mary Tudor, Suffolk took part in the jousts which celebrated the marriage of Mary Tudor, Henry's sister, with Louis XII of France. He was accredited to negotiate various matters with Louis and on Louis' death was sent to congratulate the new king, Francis I, and to negotiate Mary's return to England. Love between Suffolk and the young Dowager Queen Mary had existed before her marriage, and Francis roundly charged him with an intention to marry her. Francis, perhaps in the hope of Queen Claude's death, had himself been one of her suitors in the first week of her widowhood, and Mary asserted that she had given him her confidence to avoid his importunities. Francis and Henry both professed a friendly attitude towards the marriage of the lovers, but Suffolk had many political enemies, and Mary feared that she might again be sacrificed to political considerations. The truth was that Henry was anxious to obtain from Francis the gold plate and jewels which had been given or promised to the Queen by Louis in addition to the reimbursement of the expenses of her marriage with the King. And he practically made his acquiescence in Suffolk's suit dependent on his obtaining them. The pair cut short the difficulties by a private marriage on March 5, 1515. Suffolk announced this to Thomas Wolsey, who had been their fast friend. Suffolk was saved from Henry's anger only by Wolsey, and the pair eventually agreed to pay to Henry a £24,000 in yearly instalments of a £1,000, and the whole of Mary's dowry from Louis of a £200,000, 
together with her plate and jewels. They were openly married at Greenwich Hall on May 13. The Duke had been twice married already, to Margaret Neville and to Anne Brown, to whom he had been betrothed before his marriage with Margaret Mortimer. Anne Brown died in 1511, but Margaret Mortimer, from whom he had obtained a declaration of nullity on the ground of consanguinity, was still living. He secured in 1528 a bull from Pope Clement VII assuring the legitimacy of his marriage with Mary Tudor and of the daughters of Anne Brown, one of whom, Anne, was sent to the court of Margaret of Savoy. Mary Tudor died on June 25, 1533, and in September of the same year Suffolk married his ward Catherine Willoughby, Shiro Jury Baroness Willoughby de Earsby, then a girl of thirteen. She had been betrothed to his son Henry Brandon, Earl of Lincoln, but the boy was too young to marry. Suffolk did not wish to risk losing Catherine's lands, so he married her himself. By Catherine Willoughby he had two sons who showed great promise, Henry and Charles, Dukes of Suffolk. They died of the sweating sickness within an hour of each other. Family, before February 7, 1507 he married Margaret Neville, widow of Sir John Mortimer, and daughter of John Neville, first Marquis of Montague, slain at the Battle of Barnet, by Isabel and Galdis Thorpe, daughter and heiress of Sir Edmund Ingalls Thorpe, by whom he had no issue. The marriage was declared void about 1507 by the Archdeaconry Court of London, and later by papal bull dated May 12, 1528. Margaret subsequently married Robert Downes, gentleman. In early 1508 in a secret ceremony at Stepney, and later publicly at St. Michael's, Cornhill, he married Margaret Neville's niece, Anne Brown, daughter of Sir Anthony Brown, standard bearer of England 1485, by his first wife, Eleanor Utted, the daughter of Sir Robert Utted of Kexby, North Yorkshire and Catherine Eyre, daughter of Sir William Eyre of Stokesley, Yorkshire, by whom he had two daughters, Anne Brandon, who married firstly Edward Grey, 4th Baron Grey of Powys, and after the dissolution of this union, Randall Haworth. Mary Brandon, who married Thomas Stanley, 2nd Baron Monteagle. He contracted to marry Elizabeth Grey, 5th Baroness Lyle. He was thus created first Viscount Lyle of the Third Creation in 1513, but the contract was annulled, and he surrendered the title before 1519 or in 1523. In May 1515 he married Mary Tudor, Queen Dowager of France, by whom he had two sons who died young, and two daughters, Lord Henry Brandon. Lady Frances Brandon, who married Henry Grey, Marquess of Dorset, by whom she was the mother of Lady Jane Grey. Lady Eleanor Brandon, who married Henry Clifford, 2nd Earl of Cumberland. Henry Brandon, 1st Earl of Lincoln. On September 7, 1533 he married Catherine Willoughby, 12th Baroness Willoughby de Earsby, by whom he had two sons, both of whom died young of the sweating sickness, Henry Brandon, 2nd Duke of Suffolk. Charles Brandon, 3rd Duke of Suffolk. After Brandon's death his widow married Richard Bertie. He had a number of illegitimate children, Sir Charles Brandon, who married Elizabeth Piggott, widow of Sir James Strongways. Francis Brandon, who married firstly William Sandon, and secondly Andrew Billsby. Mary Brandon, who married Robert Ball of Scotto, Norfolk. Fictional portrayals The romance between Mary Tudor and Charles Brandon is fictionalized in When Knighthood Was in Flower by American author Charles Major writing under the pseudonym Edwin Cascoden. It was first published by the Bob's Merrill Company in 1898 and proved an enormous success. At least three movies have been based on this novel. A 1908 motion picture of the same name or under the title When Knights Were Bold was directed by Wallace McCutcheon. This is considered a lost film. He is portrayed by Forrest Stanley in the 1922 film adaptation When Knighthood Was in Flower, directed by Robert G. Vignola, and by Richard Todd in The Sword and the Rose, an account of his romance with Mary Tudor in 1515. The Reluctant Queen by Molly Costain Haycraft presents another fictionalized version of the relationship between Brandon and Mary Tudor. Brandon is briefly fictionalized in the historical novel The Last Bollion by author Karen Harper. Brandon is portrayed by actor Henry Cavill in the Showtime series The Tudors. He is a character in the novel Mary, 
Queen of France by author Jean Plady. He appears as a character in the novel The Lady in the Tower by author Jean Plady. He also appears as a character in the Man Booker Prize winning novel Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle, and in its sequel, Bring Up the Bodies. He is portrayed as an attempted rapist in the novel Dear Heart, How Like You This. Based on the life of Sir Thomas Wyatt, in the novel The Serpent Garden by Judith Merkel Riley, Brandon is portrayed as an immensely strong but rather dim witted noble with a poor sense of spelling. Ancestry, notes. References, Burke. John. A Genealogical and Heraldic History of the Commoners of Great Britain and Ireland I London, Henry Colburn. PA 205. Retrieved July 18, 2013 A, Cocaine, G. E. The Complete Peerage edited by Geoffrey H. White. 12. London, St. Catherine Presser, Goon, S. J. Brandon, Charles, First Duke of Suffolk. Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Oxford University Press. doi 10.1093326 a Goon, S. J. Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk c. 1484-1545. Oxford, Basil Blackwell PPA 46 a Euro 7. ISBN a 0 631 15781 6 a Richardson, Douglas. Of Erringham, Kimball G., ed. Magna Carta Ancestry, A Study in Colonial and Medieval Families I Salt Lake City PPA 297 a Euro 302. ISBN A 1449966373 A, Richardson, Douglas. Of Erringham, Kimball G., ed. Magna Carta Ancestry, A Study in Colonial and Medieval Families II. Salt Lake City PPA 359 a Euro 60, 455. ISBN A 1449966381 a Richardson, Douglas. Of Erringham, Kimball G., ed. Magna Carta Ancestry, A Study in Colonial and Medieval Families III. Salt Lake City PPA 225 a Euro 6. ISBN A 1449966396 X A, Further Reading, Perry, Maria. Sisters to the King, The Tumultuous Lives of Henry VIII Sisters A Euro Margaret of Scotland and Mary of France. London, André Deutsch. ISBN A 0233050906 A, Reed, Evelyn. Catherine, Duchess of Suffolk, A Portrait. London, Jonathan Caper, Charles Brandon. First Duke of Suffolk. Encyclopedia Britannica Online. Encyclopedia Britannica 2011. Retrieved October 21, 2011. A. Pollard, A. F. The Project Gutenberg. A Book of Henry VIII. A. A. Gerdner, James. Brandon, Charles. In Stephen, Leslie. Dictionary of National Biography 6. London, Smith. Elder and Company PPA 218 a Euro 222 a